Hi, I'm Dr. Abe. I'm an MD and cannabis health coach, and I'm here to give you the basics about CBDA and how it affects your body. CBDA, or cannabidiolic acid, is actually CBD's lesser known parent. Cannabis plants actually have to make CBDA first in the trichomes before they can make CBD. While you might think of hemp flower as being rich in CBD, raw hemp plants actually have to make more CBDA before they're cut and processed. When raw hemp plants are exposed to heat or light, the CBDA quickly breaks down into the CBD you know. Your body can also metabolize CBDA into CBD, something interesting that we can do with THCA and THC. Since CBDA is so abundant in hemp, you can find it in all sorts of consumer products like tinctures, oils, edibles, vapes, and obviously hemp flour. Extracting CBDA from hemp plants requires very delicate and cold processing, or it'll just turn into CBD, which is why it's a rarer find. Cannabis plants that are high in CBDA and CBD are what we call hemp, or defined as type 3 cannabis by researchers. I use CBDA a lot in my coaching. The best example is a patient with over 40 years of insomnia who tried absolutely every kind of sleeping pill and anxiety medication out there, but nothing else worked. Understandably, he was quite skeptical at first. But after a month of using one-to-one -one CBD and CBDA tincture at 40 milligrams each nightly, he gratefully reported back that he was sleeping 150% better. And three months later, he was getting sleep he hadn't had for decades and was even more productive at work. You may also be surprised to hear that there aren't actually any clinical studies done on CBDA yet. Right now, we can only rely on our experience, animal studies, computer simulations, and what we know about its better known offspring, CBD, to figure out its possible uses. From that info, we could say that CBDA has a lot of potential to help you relieve nausea, pain, anxiety, depression, and possibly seizures. It's also a great candidate for helping people with liver disorders from obesity, alcohol, or hepatitis C. If you take CBDA, you'll actually have three times more levels of CBD in your system than if you took the same dose of plain CBD. This is because the acid, or A, in CBDA makes it more water-loving, so it's better absorbed than regular CBD. And because our body naturally breaks the CBDA down right into CBD, this means that it should feel exactly like taking CBD. You won't feel impaired from it, but you could notice subtle improvements in your mood and stress levels. If you have existing symptoms like pain, depression, or nausea, you could take a CBDA tincture to help you feel relieved from these symptoms. If you have social anxiety, CBDA can make you feel more comfortable fitting in with the crowd or public speaking because it can directly target our anxiety centers, endocannabinoid system, and is a thousand times more potent at the serotonin receptor than its neutral sibling CBD. The serotonin receptor plays a key role in mood, anxiety, sleep, nausea, and fighting depression. Taking CBDA at night could also help you sleep better, which is great if you have trouble falling asleep or tend to wake up throughout the night. A huge advantage of CBDA is that it won't get you high, affect your thinking, or cause any new or different sensations. You can feel free to take CBDA in the morning or afternoon, before going to work or school, or while you hit the gym for your workout, or go to a social event afterward. It doesn't affect your motor skills or anything like that, so you can pretty much take it any time throughout your day and feel perfectly fine. Since CBDA is quickly and efficiently broken down into CBD in your body, the two of them are assumed to be just as safe. Until more research shows us any new concerns about CBD or CBDA, it's unlikely that CBDA will react differently or unexpectedly from CBD. CBD is widely recognized as generally safe and well-tolerated, and has even earned the gold standard for medical research in the form of FDA approval as a purified pharmaceutical form called Epidot. In the world of medicine, nothing is free of side effects, including CBD and CBDA, but the effects really depend mostly on the dose you take. Most of the side effects of CBD happen at doses in the hundreds of milligrams, 
which is way more than the 50 milligrams per day dosage that I typically recommend my patients. Since CBDA is three times better absorbed than CBD, you may be slightly more likely to run into the common side effects of CBD. This could mean dealing with an unset stomach, sleepiness, or feeling less hungry if you take too much. Don't worry though, these are usually mild to moderate and go away on their own within a few hours. CBDA and CBD have a great safety profile, but people taking medicines for seizures need to be careful because they can increase the levels of those medications. People with seizures usually work closely with their doctors anyway, so you can ask them first if you plan to take CBDA or CBD. There are other common medications that CBDA and CBD could also increase, but it's very unlikely that they would cause a significant reaction. If you have a specific medication question or any health concerns, ask your doctor or provider first before taking CBDA. CBDA is at the top of my first choice list, right alongside CBD. It's almost always one of the first things that I recommend for my patients. In fact, I rarely recommend pure CBD by itself anymore, always a combination of both CBD and CBDA instead. Since I know about the better absorption and synergies, I always pair it in equal parts to CBD to help increase effectiveness for my patients. It's the best addition to any cannabis action plan that involves CBD. I would highly recommend CBDA to anyone who takes CBD. Seriously, if you're already taking CBD, try adding an equal part of CBDA to get even better effects. By far, I've had the most success with CBD and CBDA in my coaching. I've helped so many people with CBD and CBDA in moderate to severe conditions like treatment-resistant cancer, nausea, years of chronic pain, dementia-related symptoms like agitation, and decades of hard-to-treat insomnia. If you've used CBDA, let us know about your experience in the comments. Or if you have any questions about CBDA, write them in the comments section and I'll try to answer them or point you in the right direction. For more information on CBDA, visit the link in the description.